at this time of uncertainty and challenge. We come to worship separated by distance, but together in purpose and the presence of God. In this and future weekly reflections, may we know the God of peace within us. May we know the God of love surrounding us. And may we know the God of hope upholding us. The Gospel reading for this Sunday is taken from St. John's Gospel in chapter 9. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, Jesus spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbours and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. When I went and washed and received my sight, they said to him, Where is he? And he said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I wash, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciple? 
Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and worship. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now what you, that you say, we see your sin remains. Thanks be to God for his holy word. There is no doubt that we are living in uncertain times. We might even say that we are living in dark times. We don't know and we can't see what the future holds. And from experience, we know that this is always the case. How many times do we find ourselves commenting, if only we knew, or if only we could know? Today is no different, and yet somehow this all seems more real for so many of us. In this last week, many lives have been changed as we have been faced with making uncomfortable decisions about our work, our families, and our way ways of living. We have consciously distanced ourselves from people we love. In this, we don't like the uncertainty, and we often struggle to understand. In much the same way, people in this Gospel story struggle to understand, and the question why runs right through the passage. First the disciples, then the neighbours, then the Pharisees and the Jews, all wanting to know why Jesus did this and how it happened. The man who was born blind can see and they don't understand. At the time when we face this global pandemic, it is important to ask questions and to get answers. And I am sure there are many scientists and clinicians across the world wrestling with this challenge. How did it start? How will it end? What do we do in between? However, in the Gospel story, many people were not satisfied with the answer they received, and that's why it was asked over and again. The answer did not fit their understanding. It didn't work with their established beliefs and values. They didn't believe it was the right man. They needed more evidence. At the beginning of the story, even before the man's sight was restored, Jesus said to his followers, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And towards the end, 
the man who professes his belief in the Son of Man. In the midst of all the questions and doubts, this man's life is transformed, and his darkness, his blindness, is turned to light, and he comes to believe. The musical Starlight Express ends with the entire cast singing, There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. The inside might be as black as the night, but at the end of the tunnel, there's a light. These great words of hope come at the end of all the struggles that are played out in the storyline of the show. Through our Christian faith, we believe those words of Jesus to be true. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. It's a statement of our faith and a statement of hope. Hope that in this uncertain time, this time of darkness, of blindness, we can believe in a God who loves each one of us completely. A love shown to us in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. It is this God who journeys with us in life, not answering all our questions in the way we expect or understand. But God holds us as we seek a deeper understanding of his purpose for us. The words of Jesus remind us that he is a light at the end of the tunnel, and also a light in the tunnel as we journey through the darkness. We often see this light in our darkest times, as we realise afresh the true value of our families, as we know the care and love of our neighbours and friends, as we experience the selfless giving of all care workers, as we have seen glimpses of light and hope in the actions of strangers, as we come to know that light is a gift of God in an uncertain world. The Archbishop of Canterbury has suggested that we should all light a candle at seven o'clock this Sunday evening to show our solidarity with the rest of humanity, our concern for the world and our hope in the light that shines still in our darkness. We can do this tonight, and maybe through this uncertain time, we can do this every night as we hold the light of the world before us. We offer a time of prayer. On this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for our families and all those who care for us. We think of those from whom we are separated because of the pandemic. May all be surrounded by God's love. As the world seems to be changing at a faster pace than we can understand, we think of those who are feeling anxious and scared those who only know darkness in this time of uncertainty, those who do not have food, and those who already find themselves without work. May all be filled with God's light. As many are suffering, we think of those who are in hospital receiving treatment, and the many self-isolating at home. We think of those who are caring for them, medical professionals and family carers. May all be touched with compassion and God's healing. As we face the week to come, we think of the things about which we are anxious and the people who share life with us. May all know the hope that comes.
through trust in God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we end this reflection, may we know God's blessing upon us and all for whom we care. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.